Hello everyone. This is the first lecture of electric circuits. Welcome to this course. Before going to this course, we'll understand the basics of electric circuits in this video. So, we'll start from the basic component resistor. Its symbol is like this and uh, V is equal to IR. It is Ohm's law. In time domain, it is written like this. And if you take the Laplace transform, then you will write this. Now we have this inductor and capacitor. We all know voltage is equal to d phi by dt. And this phi is equal to Li. And since L inductor is constant, therefore we can write it as di by dt. Therefore in time domain, it is written as Vt is equal to L di by dt. And for it, you will integrate. 1 upon L integration Vt dt. Now in S domain it is written as Vs is equal to SL into Is and uh, Is is written as 1 upon SL into Vs. Therefore impedance ZL is equal to SL and admittance is equal to 1 upon SL. For sinusoidal excitation we put S is equal to J omega. Therefore, ZL will become J omega L and admittance will become 1 upon J omega L. Now for capacitor, we all know that the current is equal to rate of change of charge dq by dt. And we all know Q is equal to CB where C is capacitance and it is constant. Therefore, we can write it as C dV by dt. Therefore, in time domain, it is written as this. And Vt, and for Vt, we will integrate it and divided by 1 upon C. And when we take its Laplace transform, then we will get Vs is equal to 1 upon Sc into Is and Is is equal to SC into Vs. So we can see that here impedance is 1 upon SC and admittance is SC. So for sinusoidal excitation it becomes Zc is equal to 1 upon G omega C and Yc is equal to G omega C. You can see when there is differentiation we add S and when there is integration we add 1 upon S. This is all about Laplace transform which you will study in maths. So now we know that impedance for inductor is G omega L and uh, impedance for capacitor is 1 upon G omega C. So now put omega is equal to 0 here. Then ZL will become 0 and ZC will become infinite. And when we put omega is equal to infinite, then ZL will become infinite and ZC will become 0. So, impedance is equal to 0 means short circuit. And impedance is equal to infinite means open circuit. Okay, so now we all know that omega is equal to 2 pi f where f is frequency and f is equal to 1 upon t. So omega is directly proportional to 1 upon t. Omega is equal to 0 means t is equal to infinite and omega is equal to infinite means t is equal to 0. So t is equal to 0 means initially. Initially inductor is open circuited and capacitor is short circuited and t is equal to infinite and t is equal to infinite means at steady state capacitor will become open and inductor will become short circuited you have to remember this as it will help you in solving many questions okay now we'll see some basic functions like unit impulse function 
unit impulse function is denoted by delta t and it is defined as at t is equal to 0 it is infinite and at t not equal to 0 means anywhere it is 0. Now we all know that if you uh, have to find the area under the curve then what you do? We integrate ft with respect to dt. Here limits are t1 and t2. As you can see then this formula will give this area. Now if we have to find the area of impulse function over its total over its whole time period or you can say from minus infinite to plus infinite then its value would be 1. This is the reason why we call it unit impulse function. Its area is 1. Another property of delta t is if we integrate impulse function with any other function gt then here delta t is defined only at t is equal to 0. Therefore, the value of its integration is equal to gt at t is equal to 0 which is g0. Similarly, in this case, this impulse function is defined only at t is equal to t0. So, its value would be g t0. Also, delta t in Laplace transform it is written as 1. Yes, Laplace transform of impulse function is 1. Now our next function is step function. Step function is defined as 0 at when t is negative and 1 at t greater than 0. Why we call it unit step function? Because its value is 1 when t is greater than 0. Its Laplace transform is 1 upon s. Okay, so now our next function is ramp function. Ramp function is denoted by RT and it is a straight line passing through the center such that its slope is 1. Therefore, it is known as unit ramp function. So, RT is equal to 0 when T is negative means in this area and when t is greater than 0 then its value is t. Therefore we can write rt as tut and its Laplace transform will be 1 upon s square. See you can see the Laplace transform of unit step function is 1 upon s and uh, Laplace transform of tut means rt ram function is 1 upon s square. So this means if we multiply t here then here it is divided by 1 upon s. You will understand further about Laplace transform in maths and signals and system. But for now this is sufficient. Okay, so now we can say that unit impulse function is equal to differentiation of unit step function and double differentiation of unit ramp function. Similarly, Unit ramp function is equal to integration of unit step function or double integration of unit impulse function. From this you can also say that ut unit step function is derivative of unit ramp function and integration of impulse function is unit step function. So this is how these three functions are interrelated. Now we will see about the transfer function. Transfer function is denoted by HS. It can be noted by anything but generally we use HS and it is defined as output upon input but in Laplace transform in S domain. So here is a definition. The transfer function of a network represents the ratio of output to the input each in the S domain and um, here assuming all the initial conditions in various elements contained in the network to be zero. So this is our assumption. Okay now let's take um, input voltage to be one. 
which means I have taken input voltage to be impulse function. So now what would be HS? HS is equal to V naught S. Right? Therefore, impulse response of the network means response when the input is impulse. So, impulse response of the network is HS. Therefore, transfer function is also known as impulse response of the network. So, next is KVL and KCL. It's very basic. Here, V1 is equal to IR plus V2. See, in KVL and KCL, only one sign convention you have to follow. For example, here, I am moving in this direction and um, I am taking when current is flowing from the positive terminal of voltage source then I will take V1 as positive and when it is going in positive terminal going in positive terminal then I will take V2 as negative so V1 minus V2 now for R if I am moving in this direction and current is flowing in this direction in this resistor just like this I is flowing in this direction then I will write here IR and if current is flowing in this direction then I will write minus IR in place of IR. You will understand all this in further classes while solving questions and uh, here in KCL if we see this node then from this node you can write I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 and this is the KVL. What we do is here we voltage V1. See this is the voltage V1 and therefore I1 is equal to I2 means V1 upon R1 plus I3. What is I3? V1 upon R2. So this is KCL and similarly see here one uh, loop or one mesh is considered therefore this is known as mesh analysis and here node is used therefore this is known as nodal analysis. Okay so now we will understand this voltage division rule and current division rule. Actually there is no such rules. It is just a trick to solve questions in less time. So let's start with voltage division rule. Here V is equal to I which is flowing in this direction R1 plus R2 therefore I is equal to V upon R1 plus R2 and V1 is equal to IR1. We can write the value of this I here then we will get R1 upon R1 plus R2 and then V2 is equal to R2 upon R2. R1 plus R2 into V. So here what is the rule is that total voltage is divided by total resistance and then if you want to find V1 then we will multiply this by R1 and if you want to find V2 then we will multiply this by R2. This is valid only for series connection of resistance. Now in case of current division rule, here we have derived that uh, V is equal to I, R1, R2 upon R1 plus R2 and uh, I1 is equal to V upon R1, therefore R2 upon R1 plus R2 into I. Here I1 is equal to I upon total resistance R1 plus R2 and then this is multiplied by resistance of another branch. It is multiplied by resistance of another branch. So here it is R2 and similarly for I2 the total current is divided by R1 plus R2 and then the resistance of other branch. So it's R1. So this is how current is divided in these two branches. This is case for only two branches only. For more branches then 
this rule will be applicable but you have to modify that system but uh, for two branch system this kind division rule is valid and this is valid for parallel connection okay so sources in series and parallel if v1 and v2 are connected in series like this these are two voltage sources then the equivalent connection you can write as v1 plus v2 and if here v2 is minus plus v2 then the equivalent source would be v1 minus v2 now if these voltage sources are connected in parallel like this then what will happen so in this case voltage source cannot be connected in parallel this is one thing and second if they are connected in parallel then the only condition is that v1 must be equal to v2 therefore the equivalent voltage would be either v1 or v2 and both should be equal now we'll start from this condition if i1 and i2 are two current sources in parallel then the equivalent source would be see i1 is flowing in this direction i2 is flowing in this direction then the total current flowing is i1 plus i2 therefore equivalent connection would be i1 plus i2 now in this case when two current sources are in series so now here in earlier we have seen that no two voltage sources can be connected in parallel unless they are equal similarly the current sources cannot be connected in series unless and until both are equal therefore the equivalent current would be i1 is equal to i2 now this is basic source transformation if source and the resistance are connected in series see voltage source and resistance are in connected in series then its equivalent parallel connected resistance and current source would be this for now if you can remember this then it's okay if not then you have to wait for next few lectures because then you will understand about thevenin and norton theorem there you will understand how you can convert this uh, series connection into parallel and this parallel connection into series but for now you can just remember this that rs connected in series with the source is connected here in parallel and the equivalent voltage okay here what is the equivalent voltage it is vs minus rs it and here what is the equivalent voltage see here vs upon rs is flowing in this direction and it is flowing in this direction therefore current flowing here would be vs rs minus it so here i have applied kcl as you remember so vt is equal to rs upon vs rs minus it which is equal to vs minus it rs so as you can see that the both the value are same therefore this connection can be written like this now here what is vt vt is rs is minus it right because is is flowing here like this so the total current flowing in rs is is minus it and here vt vt is equal to isrs minus itrs so both are equal therefore in place of 
this connection, we can write this connection. You will understand this in Thevenin and Norton theorem. But for now, you can either learn the formula or you can learn from the small derivation. Okay, so now we will see the star delta transformation. And uh, this is the formula. You can see now how to remember this formula. This is the main problem. Okay, so here you are converting from star to delta. So here formula is SOP upon remaining. This is just a short trick to learn this formula. So what is SOP? SOP is sum of products. So these are products of all the resistance RA into RB, RB into RC, RC into RA. And then if you want to find RAB, RAB which would be here R A B then it is sum of products this and then remaining so what is remaining here it is R C similarly if you want to find R B C then you will write sum of products which is same in all cases and then remaining so what is remaining here it's R A the opposite side and similarly you will calculate RCA okay so now here we are going to convert delta into star therefore its formula is product upon sum okay so product is in numerator in this case and sum is in denominator so sum is what RAB plus RAC plus RBC which is common in all the cases and then we have to find the product so for RA you will take the product of RAB and RAC and for RB you will take the product of resistance connected to this B, RAB and RBC and similarly for RC you will take RAC into RBC and then the sum is in denominator is common in all the cases. So if you are converting from star to delta then SOP upon remaining and if you are converting from delta to star then you will write product upon sum this is just a short trick to remember this conversion okay so our last topic of this lecture is Laplace transform here I have mentioned few very common Laplace transform which you will need in solving questions so here this is impulse unit function as you can remember and its Laplace transform is 1 for unit step function ut it's 1 by s and for uh, unit tram function it is 1 by s square you have seen this now if transformation of ft is fs then if it is delayed by t then is then its laplace transform is multiplied by e to the power minus st and then you have this e to the power minus at is 1 upon s plus a so actually when nothing is written then we take here as step function so it's actually written e to the power minus at into ut and then its step transformation is ut step transformation is 1 upon s and since it is multiplied by e to the power minus at therefore we'll increment the value of s by a s plus a for more derivation you can refer to your maths book now we have sin vt then its laplace transformation is b upon s square plus b square and if it is cos then we have s upon s square plus b square then here if e to the power minus at is multiplied then what will happen we will increment the value of s by a so this will become b upon s plus a ka whole square plus b square and for cos bt again you have to increment the value of s by a so wherever there is s you will replace it by s plus a now t what is t t is ram function so its laplace transform is s square and then when you have multiplied it by e to the power minus a t then it becomes 1 upon s plus a square s is replaced by s plus a now the last two laplace transform is derivative and integral form of ft so 
if we differentiate ft then s is added in general and if you integrate ft then then fs is divided by s so differentiation means multiplication of s and integration means multiplication of 1 upon s but if they have some initial condition then you will write as sfs minus f0 plus where f0 plus is the value of ft at t is equal to 0 plus and uh, for integration you will integrate ft and then put t is equal to 0 you will understand all this better by solving questions in further classes so this was the first lecture of electric circuits it was just all the basic information which you must know before going to the subject thank you